Hi, this is Dean Richards here with Ed Margolis, co-director of Lucky Glider Rescue and Sanctuary. Ed is here to uh, give us a little bit of an introduction on what, is, what a sugar glider actually is. So, uh, Ed, glad to have you. Thanks, Dean. Well, um, of course, everyone's probably... A few people out there actually don't know what a sugar glider is. Could you just explain a little bit about what they sure. are? Sure. Um, a sugar glider, um, Cataris breviceps is their uh, Latin name. It stands for short-headed rope dancer, believe it or not. They're a small uh, marsupial, technically a possum, uh, and their area of natural distribution is uh, Indonesia, the eastern seaboard of Australia, and uh, Tasmania. Um, they're marsupials, meaning that they, uh, they have imperfect birth. That is to say that with a very short gestation period for these animals of uh, 16 days, uh, when they're born, they, they crawl out of the birth canal onto the outside of mom, up a couple of, uh, an inch and a half or so to the pouch. They climb into the pouch and then they attach themselves to one of four teeth in the pouch and then stay there for two months to, to, uh, to uh, develop. Um, so whereas, you know, human uh, uh, and, and other mammals uh, stay inside and are fed through the umbilical cord, you know, through the, you know, until they're born, uh, with sugar gliders, they're, they're born almost prematurely uh, and then they uh, live in the pouch for two months. When they emerge from the pouch, uh, they look like little miniature sugar gliders. When they come out, at first, before they crawl in the pouch, they look like little maggots. <laughs> but this is, this is the way marsupials do it. Um, and uh, they, uh, the, the suckling of the, of the teeth, the nursing for two months is akin to the umbilical cord. Uh, so they got a long tail and, uh, and uh, you know, five fingers with an opposable thumb on their front hands. And uh, they, uh, the, the, the tail is not um, prehensile, meaning they don't, they can't hang by their tail. They do carry twigs and leaves in their tails. They only weigh about full grown, about 150 grams, or about five ounces. Uh, you know, they're cute little buggers. They have big bug eyes, black eyes, racing stripe down their back. They, they kind of look like a cross between a chipmunk and a flying squirrel. And they have a patagium, which is a, you know, a flap of skin that attaches their uh, ankles to their wrists so they can stretch out their arms and legs and glide. They can't fly up, but they can glide down. And it's a way they uh, jump from tree to tree to, to forage for food and, in, in some cases, uh, evade predators. So you said they live in the rainforest. What uh, mainly composes their diet in the wild? What is there for them to eat out in the rainforest? Well, we've read a lot of uh, research on this, uh, and a real good book uh, is called Marsupial Nutrition. And in that book, uh, they cite uh, you know four or five staple foods. Uh, one being the sap of eucalypt trees. There's a lot of eucalypt class type of trees uh, in, in these areas, and acacia trees. And what they'll do is they'll take their, their lower teeth, which are very long and sharp, and they'll use that to scrape the bark uh, from a eucalypt or uh, acacia tree until it uh, bleeds sap, and then they, they lick that sap. And they're, they're rich in glucose, and there's even some proteins in there. Uh, and they, I, I'd say that uh, you know, a large part of their diet in the wild is sap. Also, honeydew. Uh, honeydew is the, the leavings of, of insects as they crawl around on leaves. Uh, they'll lick the leaves for that. They'll also lick leaves of trees for the exudites, for the little sap droppings that come out. So they'll do a lot of leaf licking and a lot of sap sucking. Uh, they also subsist on a pollen and nectar of certain flowers in, in the rainforest. So. They'll, they'll stick their little noses into a, a flower, just like a, you know a butterfly or a bat or a, or a moth will or a hummingbird for that matter. Uh, pollens, you know, uh, nectars, and uh, insects. So you got sap, you got honeydew, you got exudites, you got you know uh, pollen, uh, nectar, and insects are big on insects. Uh, insects has a lot of protein. 
and they'll tackle an insect uh, bigger than itself. Uh, so they're, you know, moths, spiders, arachnids. Well, it sounds like a pretty good diet out there in the wild. And these guys aren't any bigger than a hamster. They can't live more than two or three years, right? Well, yeah, in the wild, uh, the two things, there's three things that kill them the most in the wild. First, predators. Uh, the uh, sugar gliders uh, are preyed upon by owls, kookaburra birds, uh, monitor lizards, quolls, other larger mammals. Uh, that's one thing that's a big killer. Uh, another one is, you know, starvation. Uh, they, they, you know, they, they can starve. Um, and, 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 and last, if they get a cut or, or, or a lesion, you know, there's no antibiotics out there. And uh, they, they can uh, get infected and die pretty quickly. Uh, here, in the, in, when you raise them in, in uh, captivity, they can live as long as 15 years. It's about a dog's life or a cat. Uh, of course, you have to feed them properly, but uh, they can live up to 15 years in captivity. All right. Well, looks like you've answered some very common questions about sugar gliders. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back with more uh, information on how to keep sugar gliders as pets. And uh, if you have any questions, you can find information on luckyglider.org. Thanks, Dean.